Alright, so I am going to do the opening again today, just because I felt like it. Which means loading this game up as I go live. Should show up shortly. Oh, I think I accidentally canceled it, maybe? Oh, no, there it is. Okay, had a moment. Also, I decided to do the opening again because at the end of the day I really like the opening song. It's cute. of course picking up from it's really satisfying I was just thinking it's really satisfying to see these slowly get filled in uh, um, oh hello Nason! oh that sounds very fun all right so picking back up from midway through chapter one yeah all right so this is right after uh, Rumpel's proper introduction the amnesiac Casanova was allowed to stay at the Marchen with the other boarders. Because he still seemed capable, Parfait set him to work as one of the Marchen's servers. Anis's protests that he remain in bed fell on deaf ears. Parfait couldn't very well throw him out, not well knowing that he had nowhere to go. Lucette, thinking to herself, I would be incapable of showing him such kindness given all of the nonsense he spouts at us. Kinda with her there, honestly. The people that frequent the March Head began to steadily ignore me altogether, like I do not exist. Lucette, thinking to herself, it is better than the stares and the hateful looks. Delora, Rumple, you aren't here to flirt. Rumple, but this lovely lady is unattended. Lady, Sir Rumple, please, you're making me blush. Lucette, thinking to herself. Because the man couldn't remember his name, he fashioned one from his own curse. Rumple. I think it suits him. Delora. I will never understand Parfait. This amorous waste of space is about as useful as karma. With Delora 100% there. Speaking, speaking of the devil, karma. I pretend! In fact, Delora says, speak of the devil. Karma. Did you miss me? Karma had left abruptly yesterday, saying that she had something very important to take, to take care of. Waltz trails in after her now, carrying several boxes in his arms. Waltz. Why am I carrying these? Karma. Because you made me run that errand for you at the toy shop the other day. And because gentlemen carry things for ladies. Waltz. I'm going to drop them now. Karma. Those boxes contain very important contents. Annis. Welcome home, Miss Karma. Nice to see you survived the trip, Waltz. Waltz. Thank you, Annis. Rumble. Silence. Karma. 
So this is our new housemate. We have not yet had the opportunity to meet. I am... Karma, shocked. We are all surprised when Rumple suddenly reaches out to grab Karma's hand. Rumple. My life before this moment has been a depressing monochrome. Now that you have entered my bleak existence, I see everything in beautiful, blazing color. And nothing shines more brightly, more vividly than you. Karma. Silence. Rumble. I am Rumble, my sweet. Let us talk of marriage. Karma. Silence. I stare at Karma, waiting for her to flirt back. At the very least, I expect her to wave Rumple away for being a fool. But she remains eerily silent. Rumple. Answer, my angel, I beg of you. Karma. Keep. Rumple. Say the word and it is done. Karma. Your filthy hands off of me. Rumple. Ow! Waltz. Not again. Karma. I would never be interested in the likes of you. Man. Go on, lad. Give him a good beating. Like the one you gave to me. Rumple. My queen, there is no need for violence. Karma. What did you call me? Ennis. Please calm down. Rumple is still recovering. Lucette. What is going on? Waltz. Karma is a man. Doesn't take kindly to being flirted with. And now that I have played Karma's root, I am going to say I am much more comfortable with that statement when I think about it in terms of Karma actually is not really in a place where he likes being flirted with, with by anyone, it seems, feels like. At least not in any earnestness. So I can pretend that it's not low-key uh, offensive to like the implication that yeah anyway I, I honestly think that there are some ways in which the fact doesn't take kindly to being flirted with is probably better than doesn't take kindly to be flirted with by a man anyway i've commented on this many faces many times miss face hello yes johnny one take karma is a man and he doesn't take kindly to being flirted with there it is not necessarily a gender related thing thing, and I can work with it from there, and I've, I've discussed this before, so I'll move on. Waltz. Or propose to. Lucette. Silence. She is a man? Rumble. But your voice! Your face! Your chest! Rumble. Ow! Delora. That's what you're focusing on? Pervert. Rumble. I worship all aspects of the female form, but my particular favorite has always been- There is no point at which Rumple is worse than in the chapter one. Ugh. Rumple. Ow! Delora. Do yourself a favor and shut up. Lucette, thinking to herself. I never would have known, but why would he do this? Lucette. Silence. Karma. Don't look at me like that. I have my reasons. Lucette, is it because of your curse? Karma, silence. Yes. Rumple, I... I am undone! My heart is in pieces! Delora, you knew him for ten minutes. Rumple, for those that can hear the music of their heart like I, it takes only a look to fall madly, irretrievably in love. Oh. Well, Ms. Face, have, have fun and, and uh, hope your calligraphy project it brings you joy. Rumple. I must leave. My heart will need time to heal. Waltz. Silence. The Marchand attracts all sorts, doesn't it? Delora. That one is entirely parfait. Faye's fault. All right, all right. Nothing to see here. Back to work. Lucette, silence. I am still in shock from what I learned earlier. Lucette, thinking to herself, Karma, a man. It is not fair that he is so beautiful as a woman. 
<sighs> if the female population of Angiel knew the truth, karma would be hunted down for making the rest of us pale in comparison. Don't love that line either. Ennis, being good, I suppose, prepared a special lunch to welcome the newest Marchen boarders. We have all been invited to the private dining room. Rod. Excuse me, is Lady Parfait here? Parfait. Prince Rod, perfect timing. Please join us for lunch. Rod. I only came to talk to you, Lady Parfait. Parfait. But I'm hungry, and I've no wish to make you wait while I eat. Come, join us. Annis. Please, your highness, I've made too much, as usual. You must help us finish. Rod. Silence. Very well. Rumple. A cursed princess and a cursed prince! What an eccentric collection of friends you have, Lady Parfait! Parfait. I wouldn't say they were eccentric, necessarily. Delora. You're the most eccentric one here, Rumple. Rumple. Really, now? I sit silently in my chair. I am uncomfortable around so many people. Even when Mother was alive, I had all my meals alone, since my parents were always too busy to sit down for meals with me. The meals with Ophelia and her children were also always awkward and silent. Somehow, the atmosphere here is lively and friendly, even though I barely know anyone here. Lucette. Silence. Annis. Is something wrong? Lucette. Excuse me? Annis. You've barely touched your food. Don't you like it? Dolora said this was one of your favorites. Lucette. Silence. I'm just not used to eating with company. That's all. Garland. They say that sharing a meal brings the family closer together. Lucette. Silence. Jurian. Garland. Garland. Shocked. I... I apologize. Lucette, thinking to herself. Closer together, huh? Dolora. So, have you made any progress on how to do those good deeds, princess? Lucette, thinking to herself. There is no way I am admitting that I do not even know how to complete one. Dolora. Oh, I forgot. You're no... You're not so good on the doing good front. Lucette. You are not very helpful. Parfait. Why don't you ask someone to teach you how to do good? Lucette. What? Delora. Well, that's not something you hear every day. Lucette. As in... Take some kind of lessons? Parfait. If you're having so much trouble on your own, you should ask someone to give you some advice or teach you. It's as simple as that. Karma. What is this I hear? The princess needs advice? Well then, she is in luck. I happen to give the most excellent advice, and believe me when I say I can teach almost anything. Lucette. Silence. Rumple. The princess is indeed lucky, as I am available for teaching duties. No doubt I to be the better choice, as I don't go about deceiving the world. Karma. Excuse me? Waltz. From one-sided flirting to bitter enemies, all in the span of a few hours. Rumple. The man broke my heart! Waltz. Silence. Anyway, I'd also be happy to help you in any way I can, princess. Parfait. And I'm sure your stepbrother would be happy to help as well. Rod. Silence. Annis. I don't think I would make the best teacher for this sort of thing. Durian. I only teach others how to fight. Garling. Never mind the fact that, that Jurian herself still struggles to be good. Jurian. What? Dolora. You're lucky, aren't you? So many people are willing to help. Lucette. Why? Dolora. Hmm? Lucette. Why are you all willing to help me? Waltz. That's what we do at the Marchen. We help each other. Delora. Lesson number one. Doing good means helping whenever one can. Lucette. Silence. Waltz. Just let any of us know if you want our help. 
Lucette, thinking to herself. Trust no one but yourself. You need not care for anyone but yourself. This is what mother and the last few years have taught me. Out loud. I have always been alone, and it is easier that way. And yet... Thinking to herself. These strangers, these people that I've only known for a few days, are so willing to help me when they will gain nothing in return. Is this the goodness I was meant to see, father? Silence. How can I even begin to trust and care for others when I have forgotten how to do so? I am slowly beginning to understand what I must do. Oh wow, guess I got through most of chapter one. Anyway, uh, chapter two, what was that called? The Decision? Yes, chapter two, The Decision. Lucette, I don't see why this is necessary. Delora, of course this is necessary, princess. You work to show you can be useful. Lucette, silence. For the last half hour, Parfait and Delora have been debating what chores they want to give me. Lucette, thinking to herself, I cannot believe they are seriously going to make me work, like a commoner. Delora, no freeloaders at the Marchette, remember? And you can't pull the princess card anymore now that you're a homeless peasant. Lucette, being demoted to a homeless peasant is not my fault. Delora, if you really think about it, it was kind of me to demote you. Lucette, silence. Parfait. Stop teasing her, Delora. Lucette has had a lot thrown, her, thrown at her already. Delora. I'm only speaking the truth. Besides, working to live is the commoner's way of life, but at least it's rewarding. Lucette. Silence. Delora. But if you do nothing, you get nothing. No food, no clothes, no bed. You are no longer a princess, Lucette. Life here at the Marchand is comfortable, and you need to work for comfort. Remember that. Lucette, silence. Delora. What you do is your choice, princess. Lucette. Do I even have a choice? Delora. Not really, no. Parfait. Let's see. How about cooking duties? Delora. No way. She'd burn a salad. Lucette, silence. Parfait. She could be a receptionist? Delora. Then we'd lose all of our customers. Parfait. That's... That's probably true. Lucette. I am right here, you know. Delora, silence. Parfait. Sorry. Delora. Do you have any useful skills at all? And I'm just saying, we've said it before, I'll say it again. This is the perfect moment where they could have been like, oh wait, you've had all sorts of lessons in running a kingdom. Maybe you could help run the, help with the books or something that would actually be within her skill set. But they do not go that direction at all. Lucette, silence. As a princess, I had servants who did everything for me. They cleaned my room, helped me dress, how am I expected to possess skills for things I have never done? Parfait. Aha! Delora. Hmm? Parfait. I have found the perfect job for our Cinderella. Parfait. Ta-da! Lucette will be in charge of sweeping the March End floors. Lucette. What? Delora. Perfect! Even she should be able to do that. Could you, princess? Lucette. I refuse. Parfait. But look! I even put a cute little ribbon on the broom just for you. It's your very own special broom. Lucette. A princess does not clean. Delora. Hard-headed as ever. Don't worry, I have a fix for this. Lucette. Shocked. Suddenly, the broom flies into my hands. I am pulled helplessly along as the thing begins to sweep the floors. I try to pull my hands away, but they may as well be glued to the broom. They do not budge. Lucette. What have you done? Delora. You should be thanking me. I'm helping you with your duties. Parfait. 
Delora, isn't this a little too much? Delora. Oh, nonsense. The princess is learning useful new skills. Mr. Broom will teach her everything she needs to know. If the floor is dirty, Mr. Broom will come to life and start sweeping, and it will not stop until the floors are spotless. Lucette. What? Delora. Come on, Parfait. We've got time for a cup of tea. Parfait. But... It's Delora. She'll be fine. A little sweeping never killed anyone. Parfait. Silence. Lucette. You are dreadful. Delora. Enjoy your time with Mr. Broom. Lucette. Wait. Thinking to herself. Did they really just leave? Shocked. Hey, s slow down. The broom begins to sweep faster. Despite my protests, I am still forced, like a puppet, to sweep the floors with grudging tenacity. Lucette. I can barely catch my breath after that. Karma. Princess, Parfait sent me to check... Shocked. How lovely! It's so clean I can see my reflection on the floorboards. I'm impressed. Lucette. Do not even think about stepping into this room with your dirty shoes. Karmus. Karma. Goodness, I didn't know princesses could be such terrifying creatures. You are aware that the Martin is opening soon, yes? The floor isn't going to stay clean forever. Lucette. Then do not open the Martin. Karma. Silence. I do sympathize with you, princess. It's difficult adjusting to the commoner's life. Lucette. What would you know about that? Karma. More than you think. Lucette. What? Karma. Oh, did I let that slip? That was my mistake. Karma just smiles at me, his eyes gleaming with playful mischief. Lucette. Silence. Thinking to herself. He is definitely hiding something. As we know from Karma's Root, uh, major spoilers for Karma's Root if you haven't seen me play it or, or played it yourself, uh, Karma it knows, in fact, quite a lot about it as a prince of a neighboring country. My hands are red and sore from all the sweeping I have done today. I remember the solve Annis offered me when I first woke up in my room. Surely that will help someone. I apply it to my hands and find to my surprise that it is very effective. Most of the redness quickly fades, along with the pain. Lucette. Is this what my life will be like if I do not break the curse? Forced to work day in and day out? I cannot let things stay as they are. I must act. I lay down to rest. Tiredness falls upon me like a heavy, suffocating blanket. I close my eyes and feel myself shift into the darkness of sleep. Despite having slept for several hours, I am still t er, despite having slept for hours, I am still tired when I awake. I glance back at my hands and remember the self's effectiveness. Lucette. Whatever Annis gave me really works. I should ask her to make me more. I feel like this is not the last time I will need it. Lucette, thinking to herself. I must act quickly. The sooner I break the curse, the better. The people who offered to help me are all here. Whom should I ask for help? And I, I've been thinking about this because you can choose every one of the love interests except for Fritz. Uh, but there is a fifth option, which is I can break the curse on my own. So I'm, that's what I'm going to, so, you know, obviously for each individual person's route, I'm going to, like, choose the option that is them for who should I get to help me with my curse. But for Fritz's route, I'm going to do the I don't want anyone's help thing and see how that goes. I can break the curse on my own. They offered to help, but that could have been because they felt pressured to. This curse is my problem and my burden. I will break it on my own. Perhaps doing my duties will be considered a good deed if I do them willingly. So if I sweep without the broom having to drag me around the room... I walk up to the broom. Lucette, thinking to herself, I cannot believe I am about to do this. Silence. The floors aren't that dirty, but I heard Annis once say that there is no such thing as too clean. Annis, silence. Dolora, silence. 
Do my eyes deceive me? Ennis. Isn't it the magic? Delora. Definitely not. The enchantment I put on the broom hasn't activated yet. Ennis. Does that mean the princess is actually... Lucette. If you are going to stand around, could you not do so in the center of the room? Yes, okay, I star me confirms that I can break it on my own is the right option for Fritz. That, that was the vibe I got. I mean, it's, you know, with it, what with it being the only option that wasn't one of the other love interests, so. But still glad for the confirmation. Lucette, I am sweeping. If you, oh, oops. Yeah, if you're going to stand around, could you not do so in the center of the room? I am sweeping. Annis, silence. Delora, there's no magic here. This is the most pathetic sweeping I've ever seen. She hasn't swept anything. She's just moved the dirt around the floor. It's in a perfect even layer all over. Annis, well, she's um trying very hard. That should count. I can hear Delora and Ennis talking about me in the corner of the room, but I make a point of ignoring their words. I set the broom back and wait. I do not know what signals the completion of a good deed, but I should know it when I see it. Lucette, thinking to herself. Will there be a flash of light? Will the piece of slipper appear in my hands or on my necklace? Silence. Whatever it is, it should have happened by now. Delora. You weren't expecting to have completed one of your deeds through sweeping, were you? Lucette. Silence. Delora. Doing what's expected of you doesn't make you good. It just makes you normal. Annis. That's still a good thing. Lucette. Silence. Thinking to herself. This is going to be harder than I expected. I stare in horror at the floor. Gravel and sand are embedded between the floorboards. The wood beneath my feet is covered in a thick muck. I still feel a little bad for thinking Mr. Broom is very cute, because, like, this is kind of an awful thing that's been done to Lucette, but the broom itself is just very cute. Lucette. Oh no. S stop! Parfait. I never thought I'd see this. The princess is actually sweeping. Jurian. I'd say it's more like the broom is sweeping and the princess is just along for the ride. Garland. Lady Parfait, your orders have arrived. Where should I put them? Parfait. At the back, please. Thank you. I glare at Garland as he begins to move. Lucette. You! Garland. Shocked. Lucette. You are dirtying the floor! Garland. Sorry! Garland dashes across the floor with long steps in an attempt to leave as few footprints as possible. Jurian. This was Dolores doing, wasn't it? Parfait. Is it obvious? Jurian. This has witch having fun written all over it. Lucette. I need water. Parfait. Wow, completely spotless. Lucette, you are the worst. Parfait, don't be mad at the broom, princess. It is only trying to help. Lucette, it is doing nothing but make my making my life miserable. Fair enough, I stare me. It's interesting because technically I, Fritz's root is the root in which she technically doesn't ask anyone to be her partner. Of course, she meets Fritz again, but their partnership is unofficial. Fair enough. Witch. Lady Parfait, I must speak with you. I look up at the witch that has just entered. She is a regular at the Marchen, and according to Parfait and Delora, a good witch. She orders tea here from time to time. Lucette, thinking to herself. She has mud on her shoes. Witch. Why is she glaring at me like that? Parfait. I believe it is because of your shoes, dear. Lucette. I have just cleaned the floor. Witch. Oh, I'm sorry. I will clean up after myself right away. Lucette. Good. Jurian. Silence. Garland. Silence. Jurian. The princess is something else. 
I've never seen a witch so frightened of someone before. Garlic. Yeah. The witch hurriedly cleans up the tracks she'd made coming in before going to speak with Parfait. Lucette, thinking to herself. Even though Parfait says that Delora and this witch are good, I do not trust her judgment. Especially not when she considers Delora, who ruined my life, a good person. I put the broom back in its resting place before double-checking my work. Lucette, thinking to herself. Now that I am done, I can continue to work on breaking my curse. Whom should I ask for help today? Dot dot dot. No, I do not need any help. I head towards the dining area to get some water. The people sitting in the marchen are talking and laughing with one another. Lucette thinking to herself. Everyone is included. Everyone has someone to talk to. Is this what friendship is meant to look like? Dolora. You're making a funny face, Lucette. Are you trying to comprehend the wonders of friendship? Lucette. Silence. These people are all so friendly with one another, despite their differences. Delora. Doesn't it warm your frozen heart? Lucette. Until you consider that they're only doing it because they want something. Delora. Silence. Lucette. All of them want to break their curses. They're all here because they hope to find clues. They come to the Marchand simply to use other people for their own convenience. Is that goodness? Is that this what I am meant to do? Delora. There's a difference between using people and them offering to help you, princess. There's a big, important difference. Lucette. Silence. I don't understand. Delora. I didn't think you would. Lucette. Silence. Delora. What you say is true, but it's not the whole truth. Everyone is here to break their curses, sure, but most are here for the camaraderie, too. The understanding. It's why they keep coming back. What do you see, princess? Lucette. Silence. People talking, eating together, laughing. Dolora. Don't you see the happiness here? Lucette. Silence. Dolora. Being cursed is pretty terrible. You'd assume the cursed would be constantly sobbing and bemoaning their bad luck, right? But there's none of that here. This is what being surrounded by good, kind people does. It can make a terrible situation bearable. It can make a person feel lighter. I appreciate Dolora finally, like, getting over her snark and answering a question sincerely. Lucette. But what is goodness, then? Why are these people good when I am not? I cannot help but think about the looks they gave me when I arrived. Disdain, contempt, and anger. None of those emotions were good. Delora. Being good doesn't require you to be selfless or kind every moment of the day. Sure, these people want to break their curses, but for a time, for a meal, they can put what they want to the side and listen to someone else for a change. That in itself is selflessness. Delora nudges me with her elbow. And that makes them good people. I look down into my mug, my mind swirling with considerations. Lucette, silence. The instant I look up, Delora has disappeared. A month has passed, and I have yet to complete even one good deed. Not for any lack of trying, though. I've been asking around for advice on how to be a good person, and received various answers. Walt. What makes someone good? I'd say being selfless. I mean fair, Walt, but selfless to a point. Because if you're selfless all of the time forever, then you are a doormat and that stops becoming goodness and starts becoming a personality flaw. Annis. I think it's important that you consider another person's feelings. Rod. Patience. Rumble. The ability to soothe even the most broken of hearts. Lucette. Forget I asked. Jurian. Bravery. Garland. Loyalty. Karma. You must be beautiful, both on the inside and out. Lucette. Right. Lucette. Silence. 
Yeah, like, I mean, Ice Starmie says, it's interesting that Dolores here says she doesn't understand, or that she understands that being good doesn't require you to be selfless all the time, but it looks like she's demanding Bousset to be selfless all the time. I think... Oh, that's good to... That, that is good. I am looking forward to good Dolora interactions. I really feel like Dolora is intentionally laying it on thick and, like, exaggerating things where Lucette is concerned. Like, I think that time where she explained goodness was the first time she's actually been straight with Lucette instead of, like, kind of playing bad cop and ganging up and not ganging up, uh, and, like, being really harsh to her. So I think she probably does actually believe that. She's just pushing Lucette harder because I don't really know why, honestly. I don't really understand why Delora is being as harsh as she is. Maybe she's just panicky about Lucette's birthday coming up? Lucette, silence. Must I be all of those things in order to be good? According to Parfait, I cannot just pretend. It has to come from my heart. I place my hand on my chest and consider the steady pulse of my heartbeat. Out loud. That will not be easy. I close my eyes, thinking of all the possible ways I might be able to break my curse, but in the end, my mind is blank. Lucette. Mother, what am I supposed to do? A dream? Okay, fair enough. Uh, ranking of Delora in various people's roots by Ice Starmie's estimation. Best Delora to worst is Fritz's root is best. Followed by Waltz's root, followed by Rumpel's root, followed by Rod's root, followed by Karma's root. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Anyway, a dream. And here we have another one of her memories of her mother, all of which are terrible and her mother was horribly emotionally abusive. Mother. Your personal feelings are nothing but a weakness for others to exploit. That is why you do not show them. You only show them that you are strong. Young Lucette. Yes, mother. Mother, you must not let false kindness deceive you. People will use niceties to trick you into exploiting your weak emotions. But you can trust me, Lucette. I will never hurt you. I will never lie to you. I am all you need. Oh, God, like, in one breath, being like, never show your emotions ever, which is horrible, and then in the next breath being like, I am the only person you ever need, which is... Isolation, both of these are pretty classic abuser tactics. Young Lucette. Also, I will never lie to you is such a blatant lie. Young Lucette. Silence. Mother. I love you, Lucette. Young Lucette. I love you too, mother. Um, Delora thinks she needs to be harsh to be the bad cop, but I don't think all this harshness is necessary. Anyway, it's about tough love for her. Yeah, I can see that, but yeah, I I agree that it like it's not necessary. Delora, how are those lessons of yours going? I hope you're not giving anyone a difficult time. Lucette, I am the only one having a difficult time. Parfait, have you tried pairing up with someone? Lucette, pairing up. Parfait. Some of the people in the tavern pair up to assist each other. Two heads are better than one, as they say. Delora. It's not a bad idea, but the problem is with her. Who's going to volunteer to pair up with the Ice Princess? Lucette. Silence. Thinking to herself. She has a point. People may not glare at me anymore, but it does not escape me that I am still disliked. Parfait. Most of the boarders at the Marchand volunteered to help her, remember? And I haven't heard any of them retract their offers. Dora, it's only a matter of time. Lucette, silence. Parfait, stop it, Delora. You know it's bad when Parfait actually speaks up. Parfait, it's your choice, princess. Pairing up is only a suggestion. Lucette, silence. Thinking to herself. Would pairing up with someone really help me break my curse? What if they end up being an annoyance instead? Annis. Princess? Lucette. Silence. Annis. Um, excuse me, princess? Lucette. 
shocked. Yes. I'm sorry for disturbing you, but you've just been staring at your tray, and the customer is waiting for his order. Lucette. Of course. Delora has me helping Annis today. The Marchand is unexpectedly busy, and they cannot keep up with all the customers. Delora. Stop daydreaming, Lucette. Food doesn't deliver itself. Lucette. I do not need you to tell me that. Delora. Silence. I stretch out on my bed. The stiff mattress does little to soothe my aching muscles. I was on my feet the entire day, struggling to keep up with the steady stream of people that came into the Marchand. Lucette out loud. I have never seen the Marchand this busy. I roll onto my stomach and bury my face into my pillow. My arms and legs protest the movement. Lucette thinking to herself. I refuse to live this type of life much longer. I need to break this curse as soon as possible. Parfait. Why don't you pair up with someone? Lucette thinking to herself. Pairing up might not be such a bad idea. In a way, it's kind of sweet because it's like, rather than any of the barter borders at the Marchen, she's like, oh, I kind of miss Fritz. Because, you know, they were, she he was arguably her only real friend before all this went down. Chapter 3, Reunion, which we will play next week. So yeah, short one this time, because Chapter 2 is always short. Alright. So we're gonna save there, and I'll be back at it next week with the actual proper start of Fritz's Root. So this will be the first time, uh, the, uh, so next week we're, will be where we start getting genuinely new content. And I'm very excited, because I like Fritz a lot. And I am honestly, like, looking forward to the roller coaster that I hear his route is. So, I think that'll be a lot of fun. So, yeah, so, uh, you know, tune in again this time next week. Uh, yes, uh, I, I just had to do some mental calculus because I'm busy on a different weekday next week, but it's not Monday, so I should be fine to do my usual stream. And, yeah, so I will pick up with Chapter 3 next week at 4 p.m. as usual. Uh, my next stream this week is going to be Wednesday afternoon, and I've decided I'm going to play um, the the uh, the creators of Scarlet Hollow created uh, have made another game called Slay the Princess, and there's a demo out, so I'm going to be streaming that on Wednesday, which is going to be a lot. So look forward to that. So hope to see you folks next week or at some of my other streams, and I appreciate you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, as always, Ice Star Me. It's always great to have you here. Um, thank you for my sister for lurking and uh, Ms. Face for hanging out and listening and Johnny One Take for stopping in and anyone I might be forgetting and anyone who's just been lurking. You are all very, very appreciated. And of course, anyone who's watching this after later, I appreciate you all very, very, very much. And I will see you all later. Bye!